This is Vaquero News. Welcome back, Vaqueros. This is Samantha Garza coming to you live from Edinburgh. Starting off with a COVID-19 update, Hidalgo County now has 99 confirmed cases. Cameron County has 77 and Willacy County has five confirmed cases, one of which died over the weekend. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the family. Last week, UTRGV announced a new grading system in efforts to help students during trying times. Jerry Garindo reports. Through a message from the president of UTRGV last Friday, President Guy Bailey introduced the pass or fail option in response to the current COVID-19 crisis. This option slated for implementation soon only for the current spring semester. President Bailey explains how the plan created by the Faculty Senate will be implemented for qualifying students. Essentially, it'll work like this. You'll go ahead, you'll take your exams, and you will have a grade posted, A, B, C, D. And then once you see those grades, you'll have the option to take that grade or to elect a pass, no pass. President Bailey assured that these efforts, including the parking reimbursements, student emergency fund, and new GRE and GMAT requirements, are to safeguard the focus of achieving a degree and to mitigate the current stresses of the online transition. Students such as Mass Communications junior Miguel Zapata say that the transition is highly needed. I really think the whole pass-fail system is, in a way, a crutch that we can really like rely on. It's just really nice to know that my grades won't negatively affect me as much as they normally would. The pass or fail option will soon be available as a portal on assist once the current spring course schedule is completed. President Bailey ensures that students must continue their ongoing studies and what to look forward to once the crisis of COVID-19 is over. We think it'll be a good opportunity for you to continue the success education that you've already had and prepare yourselves for good jobs as, as soon as the financial hard times are over. More support for students at UTRGV is coming soon, as additional financial incentives are already planned for imminent announcements, says President Bailey. For more information regarding the pass or fail option, visit utrgv.edu slash ucentral, or email additional questions to registrar at utrgv.edu with the subject line of pass slash no pass. This is Jerry Galindo for Vaquero Radio News. UTRGV will also waive tests for graduate and professional study classes. Hedwig Tamez tells us more. UTRGV is waiving the graduate record examination and other tests for master's and doctoral programs for summer and fall 2020 semesters. Executive Vice President for Research, Graduate Studies, and New Program Development, Parwinder Graywall, says that due to the COVID-19, many test centers have been closed. Graywall adds that UTRGV has temporarily waived the GRE and other test requirements for students to enter the graduate schools. We at UTRGV have temporarily waived the GRE and GMAT requirement for students to enter into the graduate school. Graywall said that students who wish to start their graduate program on summer or fall of this year do not need to present their GRE scores. Graywall said that this is a great time to start attending graduate schools. This is a great time to enter into the graduate school. Sometimes under difficult circumstances, opportunities open too. Graywall addresses concerns regarding the potential of having to take the GRE in the future for students who take graduate school during summer or fall this year. If you enter into a graduate program during these two semesters, you do not have to take GRE in the future. Mass Communication senior Alex Alvarado shares his opinion about the situation. In my opinion, this is a great opportunity for UTRGV students who want to take graduate classes. The stress of taking these exams, they're gone. And it's also a safe move to keep UTRGV students safe from the current pandemic. For more information, visit the website utrgv.edu or email graduatecollege at gradcollege at utrgv.edu. This is Secretary Tamez for Vaquero News. And as you might have heard, the U.S. government will be sending economic impact checks to those who apply. Victor Rivero reports. Last Monday, the Internal Revenue Service and the U.S. Department of Treasury announced that the automatic distribution of economic impact payments will begin in a state of three weeks. The economic impact payment is a one-time payment offered by the U.S. government to financially aid those who have been impacted by the new coronavirus. Professor and Chair of Political Science at UTRGB, Clyde Barrow, says we are only seeing the beginnings of the economic impact. People get laid 
laid off. They lose their jobs. They quit purchasing as much because they don't have money. Uh, so, you know, we're only seeing the beginning of the economic impact. This is going to ripple through the economy for several months. The IRS website states that tax fighters who earn an adjusted gross income up to $75,000 for individuals will receive the full amount of $1,200. The amount of money varies for those who are married or fall dependents. Using tax filers' information from their tax returns from 2019 and 2018, they will direct deposit most of the payments. Associate Professor at UTRGB Mark Caswell says low-wage workers are most impacted by the pandemic. Most of the impact is being felt by people who are relatively low-wage workers. So, you know, people who work at retail stores, for example, or people who are servers at restaurants, uh, Uber drivers are being heavily impacted. The Treasury Department is extending the federal tax filing from April 15th to July 15th, and the IRS urges people who have not filed taxes to do so. Political science graduate Gabriel Galvan says the economic impact payment will not be enough. In my general opinion, it probably is not going to go far enough because the chances are that we are going to be dealing with this pandemic uh, well into the summer and possibly to the fall. The IRS website is warning people from a possible surge in phone call scams regarding the payment and offering tips in how to handle them. For more information on the economic impact payments, visit irs.gov. This is Victor Rivero for Vaquero News. UTRGV students that are going through financial hardships can now apply to receive an emergency fund through UTRGV. According to UTRGV's website, in order to be eligible to receive the fund, the student must be enrolled at UTRGV, be in good academic standing, and the student must be able to show proof that their capability to attend school is in jeopardy. Associate Vice President for Strategic Enrollment, Griselda Castilla, explains that the key to making the process faster is submitting a complete application. Students are highly encouraged to prepare in advance, to prepare that statement as far as what caused this hardship, and then to provide proof, whether it's a statement from their employer, a statement from the unemployment office. Some of the documentation needed is a statement from the student, and if the student lost their job or has less hours, a statement from their employer. Castilla says that the money is a scholarship and does not need to be paid back to the school in any way. It's a scholarship. It's not money that they will have to repay. It's not money that they have to work for later on and um, this is direct assistance to the students. Castilla says that in the application the students request the amount of money they need. Upon further revision, the scholarship office will let the student know how much money was approved. Communication senior Bianca Jimenez told Vaquero Radio that she was laid off as a surfer because of the pandemic. Jimenez recommends all students who need it to apply. I do recommend like anyone who just like needs any form of help, whether it's like your card payment or you have to help your family out or, you know, essential needs. This is a pretty easy outlet to turn to. To apply for the Student Emergency Fund, visit utrgv.edu slash studentlife. Click the tab that says Student Resources and look for the Student Emergency Fund. If you're looking for Donate, that link will help you out as well. This is Samantha Garza for Vaquero News. This year is the U.S. Census. Victor Rivero tells you all about their new online forms. For the first time, the U.S. Census Bureau is providing an official and secure website for people to complete their census form through the internet. The census is done every 10 years, playing as an important tool by the government to determine its total number of inhabitants and how they are displaced. The census helps decide how much funding is distributed to each city, as well as the number of representatives in Congress and state legislature. Currently, the U.S. Census Bureau is advising its population to take advantage of the online census form, continuing social distancing and protecting their workers during the COVID-19 pandemic. Census media specialist Dalila Garcia says that your census information will be protected by the Constitution. Okay, we will not ask you for your bank account number. We will not ask you for your credit card number. We will not ask you for a social security number. We will not ask you if you're a U.S. citizen. The data that we collect, it is protected by Title 13 of the U.S. Constitution. Garcia says some people have reported cases of being scammed or tricked by giving confidential information to fake census pages. Garcia says there is only one official website, which is 2020census.gov. Electrical engineering freshman Daniel Gallegos says that doing the census online will help stop the spread of the new coronavirus. In my opinion, it is a very good decision to do the census 2020 online, you know, because in these days, you know that COVID-19 is practically everywhere. So doing this system online will stop the spread of COVID-19. 
The Census Bureau is also providing alternative forms of completing the form, such as mail and through phone calls. Regarding the coronavirus pandemic, the self-response phase was extended to August 14th. Nursing sophomore Jesus Reynua says he feels more comfortable doing the census at home. Well, I feel more comfortable doing the census at home because I don't have to risk my safety. I feel like many people feel like that. For more information on how to participate in the census, visit 2020census.org. This is Victor Rivero for Vaquero News. And now, Vaquero Sports. Luis Rubio reports on the NCAA extending financial aid for athletes. The NCAA is granting an additional year of eligibility to spring sport athletes whose seasons were canceled because of COVID-19. Last Monday, the Division I Council voted to give an extra year of eligibility to athletes from baseball, tennis, golf, and outdoor track and field, amongst others. UTRGV Athletic Director Chase Conk is pleased with the decision reached by the NCAA and agrees with their ruling. Uh, what the NCAA did is, is what they should have done and, and something that we all supported, and, uh, and they made the right decision and it certainly took into consideration uh, the impact that this all has had on our, our student-athletes. However, the NCAA will allow each individual university to determine how much scholarship money would be granted to returning senior student-athletes. For the 23 possible returning student-athletes, Conk says that financial aid would be offered. And my goal and, and President Bailey's goal is to offer that opportunity to, to all of our student-athletes. And you know, over the last uh, 24, 36 hours, as, as we've been able to share that news with our young people, uh, that they're going to have the opportunity to return. You, you can imagine um, you know, how excited they were, not just that they have the opportunity, but the fact that we're going to uh, honor their aid uh, that they were on this year. With the loss of revenue due to the canceling of the spring sports, Conk and UTRGV Athletics have already started taking the first financial steps for next season. As we work uh, through our budget, as we you know, identify uh, you know, where we have some of those savings, uh, we're hoping to be able to apply those uh, to, to make sure that um, you know, our programs are healthy enough to be able to compete you know, at the level that we want them to compete at next year. For Vaquero Radio, I'm Luis Rubio. For today's weather report. Hello, Vaquero. Today is April 6, 2020, and the time is occurring 9.17 a.m. We saw some pretty cloudy skies over the weekend, and it should stay like that at least for today. Edinburgh will experience a high of 84, and night temperatures should drop to the lower 70s. Brownsville has a slight fog this morning, but it should lift later today. And they also have a high of 86 when the sun peeking in every now and then, and a low of 75 degrees. It will be pretty humid throughout the day, but good thing is that we're all staying at home. Be sure to drink plenty of water and stay safe, vaqueros. And now, for the latest events on campus. Attention UTRGV students, due to the coronavirus under the advisement of UT Health RGV, we encourage you to practice social distancing. Do not take public transportation, postpone large social gatherings, avoid crowded places, use online shopping or delivery services when possible, limit food sharing and keep your distance from others while avoiding to touch your face, eyes or nose. And remember Vaqueros, wash your hands frequently for around 20 seconds and use 60% rubbing alcohol containing hand sanitizers after touching surfaces. To facilitate access to medical care, student health sites in both Edinburgh and Brownsville are now open on Saturday and Sunday from 8 a.m. to noon. Employees may visit our UT Health RGV site on Jackson Road in Edinburgh from 8 a.m. to noon on weekends. Controlling the rapid spread of coronavirus is everyone's responsibility. As a reminder, Vaqueros, this week is the Student Government Association election. Vaqueros can vote for the 2020-2021 SGA committee. A link will be sent to your UTRGV email. You can cast your vote starting today until Friday, April 17th. For, for more information, email Jody Dominguez at jody.dominguez at utrgv.edu. And that's it for today's newscast, Vaqueros. If you have any story ideas, feel free to email us to radio at utrgv.edu. You can find all of our stories posted on our Facebook throughout the week. We'll see you next time here at 9 a.m. on Vaquero Radio. 